Financial services business Sasfin has outshone its heavyweight peers in the lending stakes, with loans and advances up by one-fifth. But high costs remain a concern for a business of this modest scale, and risks remain for the banking sector as a whole. Roland Sassoon is CEO of Sasfin. Welcome, Roland. Thank you. Now, Roland, as I indicated, the lending book grew by 23%, loans and advances up by 20%, so significantly outperforming the banking sector. And we, we hear about the hard times where people just aren't interested in borrowing. How did you do this, uh, outperforming the rest? Well, okay, so first of all, we're off a, small, a low, much lower base. And secondly, we're lending to a particular market that um, I think is growing nicely with the economy, off a very low base. Um, the demand is good. It's good. There's good quality business to be done, and we're very happy that uh, that we've now we're now moving in the right direction. I think um, if we go back a couple of years, you know, we we decided a couple of years back that we need to get critical mass. And because of the recession that took place over two years ago, it wasn't easy to get that critical mass at that time. But now that the economy is starting to grow, we're starting to see that mass coming through. So your client profile is very specific. It would be different from what the, the apps of the world are experiencing. You, it's not focused on the retailer or the big corporates. You've specifically got a small and medium-sized enterprise focus. Is that right? That is our focus, mm -hmm. yes. You also make it clear that even though you're aggressively going out to build your book, you're not taking on undue risks. Have your risk criteria changed at all? No, we, we're very conservative in our credit and uh, you'll see that our credit losses have in fact reduced quite nicely as a ra ratio of our average book, as has our uh, non-performing loans. So both have come down quite nicely and we expect that trend to continue. So not yet at a point where you could say it's stabilising, you saw ongoing improvements in the impairments? Yes. Looking also at the costs, I refer to costs being high. The cost to income ratio is, is a high 70%, much higher than the, the bigger banks, yeah. 50. Is that an issue of scale? The revenue base is much yeah, smaller? It's, it's a function of our size and our diversity. We're very diversified for, for a small bank, and that makes critical mass in each of the different areas that we're in difficult to achieve. But that's what we are now working on. So as I say, we, we made a decision a few years ago to build up our infrastructure and to go for growth. The growth is now starting to take place. Of course, the costs of compliance are much higher than they were because they've in, they're introducing Basel III and other regulations. So we understand that uh, the only way we can really make it is to have uh, substance, is to have critical mass. And that's what we're doing right across the board. So you talk about the cost of compliance, so just to say it in different words, it's going to be much more expensive for a bank your size to deal with that, to absorb it and to, to ensure ongoing compliance compared with the big ones? Well yes, relatively speaking mm. I think that that's probably correct, yeah. On the wealth management side, side uh, profits are down, what actions are you taking to address what seems to be problems yeah, there? Okay, so, so as I say, we've, we've addressed now the, the loans and advances side, that's moving up nicely and now the focus is on the, the non-interest income yes. size of the business, the fee income side of the business, and we are taking all kinds of steps. Uh, we've recently put in a new CEO for that business, uh, our stockbroking business, and um, we, are, we have a whole plan to turn, it, to turn the profits, to bring in the profits, and we think we can do very well. It's a very substantial business. Yeah. It's the old Frankel Pollock private client business. We see a lot of potential there, we just need to do certain fundamental shifts to, to get that business to, per, to perform better for us. Roland, how long have you given the new CEO to bring about that turnaround? Well, I think, uh, I think we'd like to see, see this happen in the course of the next 12 months. Yeah. You're also actively diversifying your funding sources. If you could just uh, embellish on that, um, are you finding that it's too concentrated and therefore too high risk for the business? Is it a matter well, of... Well, no, we've always, we've always been very diversified. So, as I said earlier, we diversify in our activities. We, do, we have a very granular client base and we diversified in our funding. So, we have funding through securitization, through deposits, through a very high capital adequacy. We also have interbank funding. And we're looking, we have certain funding from uh, the IFC and we're looking at other development finance uh, institutions that are starting to look at us. And we're also looking at a corporate bond. So, you know, we just need to, to keep it as diversified as possible. Yes.
But b being more diversified, would it not increase uh, the, the cost of your funding, seeing that it's smaller amounts that you're obtaining from the various sources? Um, not really. Um, look, some of that funding is more expensive because it's term. And I think that that's a big issue now in banking because in the past, in South Africa in particular, banks have really traditionally funded their business with demand deposits. Yeah. And now in terms of Basel III, that's not really good enough. So all the banks are now looking for term deposits. Unfortunately, there's a limited pool of term deposits in the South African economy because we don't have a savings culture as they might have in certain other countries. So those deposits are going to be bid up. And that's why it's necessary to have this diversification. You refer to Basel, the liquidity requirements of Basel III. Do you yes. think those are appropriate for all, given the state of the global economy is, is struggling to recover? Well, from the funding point of view, they're perhaps uh, less appropriate for South Africa because we don't have that savings culture. Yes. Um, but it's important that, uh, you know, it's very important that the banking industry is, is kept strong. It has been very resilient in South Africa. It's proved to be that over very difficult times. Um, but this is one of the, the areas that we could improve in. Roland, would you say just looking at the market on, on the lending side, are you taking market share away from the big banks? Well, we are because our, uh, our loans and advances have increased by 23% and uh, so far I haven't seen any other bank in our area yes. achieving that. You know, they, they are in the micro lending areas but we're not in that business. So what are you doing differently in this market segment? We provide a personal service. That's, that's really what Sasfin's about, is that personal service. You know, we, we're selling ourselves, you might see on the cricket, as partners beyond expectation. That's really what we are. We, we give a very high touch to our customers. We are entrepreneurs. We understand our entrepreneurial clients. We relate well to each other. And that's what we're doing, I think, to, to attract the business. So, Roland, you've got big plans, and these sound like medium to long-term plans. What are your expectations for your second half? Well, we think we'll carry on as we are. Uh, we think that the position is improving, but we certainly see in the next financial year um, a far, far better situation. Roland, thank you very much. Good talking to you. Good, thank Roland Sassoon is CEO of Sasfin.